Hey folks, Tunnel Rat here, Gerald Kaya. Uh, today I'm going to do another GIMP tutorial, and this time we are going to create a pop out image. So, an image popping out of another image. Uh, let me give you a couple examples here. Here's, uh, here's one with a woman whose arm and her head are popping out of the computer. Here's an image of me with my head popping out of the computer. This can be done with just about any image. Um, and this is actually a pretty straightforward uh, uh, tutorial. So let's get started. You're going to need two images. Both of these are available on Pixabay. I chose this one because uh, it is on Pixabay and they're free images to use. The first thing you want to do is click on your uh, laptop here. Edit with GIMP. That's going to come up in a new window. Uh, the next thing we want to do is make this image a little bigger, so we're going to click Image, Canvas Size. We're going to make this about 1920 by 1080. Okay, and just click Resize and also click Center here. That'll center your image. All right, I should have selected Resize Layers as well. You can just right-click on your layer, go to uh, Layer to Image Size right here. All right. Um, first thing I want to do is put a background in on this. I'm just going to do probably a uh, white background, which is six Fs in hexadecimal code. Okay. Throw in a white background there. All right. Now, next thing we're going to want to do is cut this screen out. So to do that, there's a couple options. I've shown you before how to use the free select tool and go around the edges. There's another tool called the Paths tool that we can use as well. And I'm just hitting Control and scrolling my mouse wheel to zoom in here. Uh, you're just going to want to go right to the uh, edge of the screen here. And see how I'm skipping the corner? I'm going to come back to that. Uh, go to each of your corners and set a marker. Click down on your mouse wheel and slide your mouse to the side to move the screen. Okay, one here, one here. Scroll it down. Of course, my phone's always got to have something to say. If you uh, if you wanted to move this over a little bit more, just hold down and move it over there. Like this one, I might move this way a little bit. So we want to get rid of all this screen. Okay, and then to connect your free select tool, slide it all the way over. Hold down the control button, and you'll see it gives you a little close link thing there. Click on the link, press enter. Oh, that gives you your free select. I uh, let me undo that. Control Z. I wanted to bring these lines out first uh, to the edge of the screen here. And you got these little uh, controlling nodes here. You can just make your curve a little bit more precise. There we go. And do that with each of your corners grab and drag take your nodes bring it in and give you a smooth curve there okay same thing on this side uh, this is just to give you another option for uh, selecting an area that you want to remove or edit modify Notice the further you bring these out, the further out it brings the curve, so it's not kind of bulging uh, right at the previous node there. And just a couple more here. Okay, yeah, it looks about right. Bring this out a little bit more here. All right, again, you just select Enter and then hit the Delete key, or you can go up here to Edit Clear uh, right here. And you can see that that gives us, let me zoom back out, press 1 to go to 100%, control and mouse wheel to zoom out further. Uh, and you can see that that gives us a uh, transparency behind the laptop. So to get rid of these nodes, just I'm going to select the move tool or a different tool. And then I can choose select none to get rid of the, the lines. And as you can see, we've got a, a clear screen to use now. So the next step is to open up our folder again and grab the picture we want to use and just drag it in there. Um, 
And what I'm going to do is drag this underneath the computer. Okay, and we're going to scale this image a little bit by uh, layer scale. And I'm going to bring it down to like 1250. I'm going to leave this anchor tied so that it automatically uh, leaves the proportions in. And then just click the scale button. Okay, you can see we got some blank space on the edge. So I'm just going to move this over so that we got our edge over there and her head. Now, if you want to see where her head and her arm are coming out at, you just select your laptop layer, drop your opacity down a little bit. You can drop it down a lot if you want and see where it's coming through. Her hand's up here, her head's right here. You can move this image around, drag it farther up, over. Uh, just keep in mind your, your edge here. If it's too big, you can always scale your laptop layer down um, to get the desired effect. So here we'll have her hand coming out right here and her head coming out right here. Um, and then the rest of this image won't even be visible. In order to accomplish this, the first thing I'm going to want to do is make this layer, the bottom layer, select that and go down to uh, layer to image size. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is grab either our pass tool or our free select tool. Um, the pass tool is good for precision and curves, unless you just take your time and use the free select tool. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll zoom in and we make sure we have the laptop layer selected. You can leave the opacity down for now. And we're going to start just below where the laptop screen is and just start selecting our uh, nodes along the path. And what I'll do is I'll fast forward this part. You can take your time, be as precise as possible. Uh, it'll make your image quality look better. So let me go ahead and fast forward this. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that we have this uh, a little bit of space here because in the laptop we've already cut out the screen. So we can just go ahead and click that to connect it. Let me zoom out a little bit here. And then uh, now that we have that selected, just press delete, bring your opacity up, and there you can see it's coming through the uh, laptop. Uh, let's select none. Okay, and there we have the desired effect where the head is coming through the laptop. Now, uh, for your, there's a couple things we can do here. We can uh, add a reflection, kind of like you see right here. Um, and also in this one, there's a little bit of a reflection on the bottom. So in order to do that, um, what we're going to do is since we're, we're happy with our cutout and how everything's positioned, we're just going to right click this layer and uh, we're going to say merge down the top layer uh, right here. So now we have both of these layers together. I'm going to hit control C or edit copy and then I'm going to go up here to edit paste as new layer and as you can see it added a layer and we come up here control the layer with the layer menu transform flip vertically Okay, grab your move tool and hold the control button and drop, oops, hold the control button and, I'm sorry, that's not going to work for the move. We're going to drag it down and as you can see we got a little bit of white at the bottom here. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is layer, transparency, uh, color to alpha, and you can see we have white selected there. Select OK, so that gets rid of the white background and just continue to drag it down and line it up here. You can use your uh, arrow keys on your keyboard. That looks about lined up right there. Just leave a little bit of a space in there. And uh, we can bring the uh, opacity of that layer down to like 10, 15 or something. It's just so it's barely visible. I'm going to do about 21. Um, and if you have enough of a, a space underneath here, you can grab your eraser tool so that your whole image isn't reflected 
grab this soft little brush right here this one uh, the 0 0.25 I believe it is in hardness grab that brush uh, use your eraser and bring the size of your uh, you can use your bracket keys here to bring your size up and then just come down at the bottom hold in your eraser and drag it across now you can't see much I'm going to bring it up a little higher starts to erase some of that reflection okay <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make this the same size as the layer it's a good practice make sure this one is the same size as the layer all right, and back on this layer right here, let's say we don't want to use uh, the white background. We want to change the background. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here. Uh, we could take our, because it's white and there's white in this image, we can't select by color or it's going to grab some from there. Uh, so we're going to come in here and just grab a different color. I'm going to grab like a light blue, D0DEE7 is the hexadecimal code. Uh, I'm going to grab my paint bucket and make sure that it says fill similar colors. Go ahead and paint that in. Uh, and if you want a gradient effect like is in this one or this one here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this uh, this light blue and this black and I'm going to go to the gradient here. Make sure it says foreground to background. Okay, RGB. Uh, and make sure the shape is radial. You can choose whatever shape you want. Um, but it's going to go from foreground, which means that's the center of the circle, to the background, which is outer. And to make this, I'm going to just zoom way out on this image here. To make this um, so that there's not too much black in there, I'm going to grab about the center of the image here. Click down, drag this way out, and let go. Whoops. Let me undo that. I need to make sure I have, uh, I forgot to do this. Select by color. It's this little tool here. And that's not going to work. What I should have done is done that before I merged the layers um, because it added the light blue into these images here as well. Uh, so, like, even if we were to say paint it in with black, that might actually work. Uh, select by color. No, that won't uh, do. Let's choose a different color. Uh, let's choose like one of these salmon colors here. Uh, see if that's gonna. There we go. Now we should be able to select by color. Nope, they've got salmon in them too. <laughs> Try a different one. Uh, it may not work. I probably waited too late to do this. Um, select none. Let's see if we can select by color now, and it'll be different. Now, see, we're changing all the colors in the image, too. So uh, so never mind what I said about the... Make sure you do that step before you merge your image down. Um, otherwise, it won't work. Okay. Otherwise, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to work. Um, but there you have it. I mean, that's basically it. Make sure you uh, save your project. When you save it, you're going to be... Uh, Saving it as a .xcf, which is your project file, which means you can open it up at a later time and edit it again. Uh, and then once you're done, export it as. And then you can choose uh, PNG or JPJ or JPG. Uh, JPG is a good one for those that have backgrounds, uh, higher quality. 90% um, is generally good. So that's it. Um, that pretty much completes this tutorial, and I'll see you for another one. Maybe we'll do some more neat text effects, uh, kind of like you see here with the uh, with the additional text added to the background. Here's another example of a pop through. So that's it. See you in the next episode.